Uh, pleasant good day to everyone. It's now uh, 12.30. I should be praying and saying, let us go home. Um, but, you know, sometimes uh, we still need to hear the word of the Lord. Um, I know it's a bit late, but just be with me for a few minutes and let us meditate upon the word of the Lord. Thank you very much for that beautiful singing, praise team. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the introduction, Elder Paul. Um, thank you for the prayers. Um, Pastor Boulder, it's very nice to see your family today. I haven't seen you all for a while. It's very nice to see you worshiping us today. And those who are here for the very first time, um, welcome. Uh, <laughs> Sasha and family, um, it's nice to see you all. Um, I, know, I know your baby is still afraid of me, but don't worry. Um, in due time, in due time, in due time. Um, I want to give God thanks for life. Um, those of you who don't know me, those who are online, I want to say welcome. Um, and today, let us feast upon the word of the Lord. Um, the Lord has placed on my heart to deliver a message today to you. And it's entitled, The Battle is Not Yours, It's the Lord's. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your words. As we contemplate upon what you have placed in our hearts, dear Lord, I'm asking you to bless us. As we leave here today, that we walk out of this place knowing that you are God, and indeed you are God to love, worship, and adore. So hear us now, we pray in your name. Amen. Second Chronicles 20, verse 15. And it says, which, were, which was ably done by Sister Shireen. Thank you very much. Now, therefore, now, therefore, um, sorry, 2 Corinthians 20 and verse 15. I'm at the wrong place. Uh, forgive me, nerves just taken in today. Um, don't worry, I, I will get over the nerves very soon. Just give me a few minutes, I'll get over the nerves. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 15. And it says, listen all ye, all you of Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and you king, Josephat. Thus said the Lord to you, do not be afraid, nor dismayed. Because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. What do you do when an enemy is out to get you? The question is asked. Is it easy to think you can fight the battle on your own? But that's almost never worked. Do you know why? It's because the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. This is a call for those involved in the war to stop, in the war to stop fighting, to be still. The word still is translation of the Hebrew word rapa, meaning slatten, let down, or cease. In some instances, the word carries the idea of drop to drop, to be weak or faint. It connotates two people fighting until someone separates them and makes them drop their weapons. It is also, it is only, it is only after the fighting has stopped that the warriors can acknowledge their trust in God. Christians often interpret the command to be still as to be quiet in God's presence. Wait, quietness, uncertainty, hopeful. The phrase means to stop frantic activities, let down, and to be still. For God's people being still would involve looking for the Lord for their help. 
For God's enemy being still would mean ceasing to fight a battle they cannot win. I can remember growing up in, in the wonderful island of Jamaica. Um, um, some of you may be jealous now, but that's all right. Um, I remember growing up and going to school was, was a wonderful thing. I can remember it was, I don't know how many of you can remember back in the days in the early 80s when you have this political warfare between the two major parties in the country. And I can remember it was close to election time and you know when the parties are going around and, and you know, telling you, you know, what they can do for you and, you know, and, you know, you should vote for them. I couldn't vote. I was a young man. I, I was still young. I was going to, I, was, I just started high school. So, you know, I, I can remember it so happens that the day before the election, it was the final day for all the campaigns. Schools were out, children are home. So it so happens that my parents sent me to the shop to get some stuff. So on my way to the shops, I heard loads of noise and screaming and, and I was wondering what was going on. And all I could hear is, they are coming, they are coming. So when I hear the word, they are coming, it was the other party passing through the area that I live, and they can't agree because they are from two different parties. So basically, I had to run for my life because I know what was going to happen. They were going to fight. So when I hear that they were coming, I started to run. I, I totally forgot that I went to the shop to buy what I was going to buy. I went back home empty-handed. My mother stood there looking at me. My father stood there looking at me. And I stood there looking at them. So I was wondering why we have to fight. Know that I am God. Know is this instant means to properly assert by saying and acknowledge being aware how does acknowledging God impact our stillness? We know that he is omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, present everywhere, omnipotent, all-powerful, holy, sovereign, faithful, infinite, and good. Acknowledging God implies that we can trust him and surrender his plan because we understand who he is. We will let exalt above the nation and I'll exalt him in the earth. If you are tempting for the nation of Israel to align with foreign powers, and God reminds them that ultimately he's exalted, and God wins, and he will bring peace. During Isaiah time, Judah looked for help from the Egyptians, even though God warned against it. Judah did not need Egyptian might. They needed re re reliance on the Lord, the repentance and rest in your salvation is quietness, trust, and strength. When we are still and surrender to God, we find peace even when the earth gives way. The mountains fall, or the nations go into an uproar and kingdoms fall. When life gets overwhelming and the business takes precedence, remember, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Run to him. Lay down your weapons, fall into his arms, acknowledge that he is God and it is exalted in the earth. Be still and know that he is God. As Christians, we like to say the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. I come across it all the time. From many of you as years members, I've come across it many a time. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. You're going through a stressful situation. You're going through a, a, something that you seems as if you can't talk to anybody about. And you come at the podium and you hear the preacher talking, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. And you wonder why you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand my pain. You don't understand my problem. 
you are living in a time when spiritual warfare is at an all-time high. We are living in a time when we have to be going back to the word of God. We are living in a time when thus say the Lord. Because the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. Don't think you can fight this on your own. Don't think that you can win on your own. Don't think that you can venture out on your own. If you do not go with God, you are a loser. If you do not walk with God, you're a loser. So the time for you is to be like the children of Israel. They were running scared. Josephat was a Jordan king. In 2 Chronicles 20, the Moabites and the Ammonites and some of the Ammonites came to wage war against him. Understandably, some of the people were afraid. They brought their fears to the king and basically told him, they are coming to get you. A whole lot of people are coming from beyond the sea and they are coming for you. Jehoshaphat was afraid and rightly so. The Jordan army was nothing in comparison to the greater army of Moab, Ammon, and the, Moab, the, the Munites. How such a tiny nation withstand the attack of their more powerful enemies. But Jehoshaphat did not put his faith in the wisdom, money, or the might of his army. He put his faith in God. I stop by to tell you today, if Jehoshaphat find time to put faith in God, you can do the same today. No matter your situation, God will take care of you. I like the song, Be not mistake, what here betides, God will take care of you. He dropped everything and sought and sought the Lord. He commanded a fast throughout the land. This was a man who knew that the battle was not his to fight or to win. It belongs to the Almighty God. In his prayer in, in, in 2 Chronicles 26 and 12, he recognized the sovereignty of God. He was basically saying, God. You created the heavens, the earth. There is nobody greater, nobody greater than you. And I like that song. Nobody great, nobody greater than you. A whole lot of people are coming after us to destroy us. And they will too. But you have the power to stop them. With you on my side, O oh Lord, on our side, we can prevail against them. So here I am. Here's your people. Humble bow before you. Asking for help. For grace. For mercy. Hear us and come to our aid. The entire country stood before the Lord. Waiting for an answer. Would God deliver them? Would he fight on their behalf? As he has done so many times in the past. And this is the answer they receive. Do not be afraid. Nor dismay. Because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours. But God's. Tomorrow. Go down against them. You will not need to fight. In this battle. Position yourself. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you. Do not fear. Or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go against them, for the Lord is with you. My dear brothers and sisters, I stop by to tell you today, God is with you today. Don't be afraid of what your enemies or anyone want to say or do against you. Stand still and watch God works in your favor. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I stop by to tell you today, no matter who you are or where you come from, when I go down on my two things I call knees and start to pray for you, trust me, Daniel God surely will deliver. Amen. You see, notice the word. They are used in this passage. You will not need to fight. 
Position yourself. Stand still and see. Do not fear. There are a lot of action words here. But it certainly conveyed that all God's people have to do is to be obedient and submissive to God and he will do the rest. Simple. As you know this ad you see on TV with these meerkats. Simple. Simple. Stand still and watch what God will do for you today. There, this thing I do when I'm upset or worried or scared, I build up in my mind. I don't know how many of you try to do this. You build it up, you build a scenario in your mind and you, you battle it out and you imagine my opponents and give them their lines and practice and my responsibilities and I find myself getting angry and angry. Have you noticed that somebody done you something and you, you have them up in your head and you, you're juggling what you're going to do and what you're going to say when you meet that person? And, and you, you're juggling and you're trying to figure out, you know, what he's going to say or what she's going to say and what am I going to say? And you're trying to figure it out in your head. And, and, and the more you try to figure it out, the more angry and the more upset you become. You see, we're all humans. We face all these things all the time. But the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. Just trust God. And no matter what they come after you or want to do or say to you, leave it in the hands of God. He will take care of you. You see, when does the Bible say about winning battles? The Bible has a lot to say about giving the battle over to God. I went down and I did my research. And I find 15 verses and I want to share them with you. And if you agree with me, that's all right. And if you don't agree with me, that's all right. I leave it to you and God. Because I know Daniel God surely deliver. And this is taken, I, I went down and, and I, I love my King James Version. But I went down and I, and I, and I sought after my, my English Standard Version. And the first one I have for you is 2 Chronicles 20. verse. Let, let me go back. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 15. And it says in the English Standard Version, And he said, Listen, O Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, King Jehoshaphat, Thus saith the Lord to you, Do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, for this great horde, for the battle is not yours but God. And we go back down into Second Chronicles 20 and verse 17. You will need to fight this battle. Stand firm. Hold your position. I can remember I saw, I, I, I saw a, 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 a clip and, and um, this man was standing and preaching. I don't know how many of you saw it. And, you know, this man was out in the outdoors preaching. And while he was there preaching, there was this Rasta man who came and wanted to interfere with the preacher. And he was swearing at the preacher and doing everything possible. And the preacher was there preaching. And all the preacher was saying to him, hold your position, son. Hold your position. But the rest of the man didn't find it funny. And while the man was there still preaching, he, the rest of the man, think that he's high and mighty and uplifted up because you know they love to say high. And he think that he can ride and high. Took some water and chuck it in the, the pastor man's face. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, you don't want to see what that pastor did. That pastor, let him feel the salvation of the Lord. <laughs> he let him have it. So you see, not all of us are there at times to, to, to bash you. And when people bash you and tear you down and, and want to rip you apart, just remember, hold your position. God is in control. Uh, let, 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 let's move on. Let's move on. Um, and we, we go back to, I'm giving you some scriptures. And Second Chronicles 20, 6 to 12. With such a tiny nation, withstanding the attack of their more powerful enemies, George Fat did not put down his faith in the wisdom, money, or the might of his army. He put it in the faith of God, in the hands of God. He dropped everything, sought the Lord, commanded a fast, sought throughout the land, 
throughout the land. This was a man who knew that the battle was not to be fought or to win. It belongs to the Almighty God. So you see, the more we study God's words, and, and, and if you look again in Second Chronicles 20 verse 13, the entire country stood before the Lord waiting for an answer. Would God deliver them? Would he fight on their behalf? Or you would stand on many. And if you look at Second Sam, um, Sam, First Samuel 17, verse 47, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves, not with sword, nor with spear, for the battle is the Lord, and he will give you into our hands. And if you look into Exodus 14, verse 13, and Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see never again. You go down to James 4 and verse 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. The horse is made ready for the day of battle. But the victory belongs to the Lord Proverbs 22, 21, verse 31. I said to you, these things to you, that in me you may find peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. For, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight, you, to fight for you against your enemies. To give you the victory. Deuteronomy 20 and verse 4. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8 and verse 31. And then I look at Psalms 34 and verse 17. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of his, their trouble. And when you look at Psalm 34 and verse 7 and it says, The angel of the Lord encamps round about those who fear him and delivers them. And you look into Isaiah 54 and verse 17. It says, No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed, and you shall conf uh, confute every tongue that rise against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the salvation servants of the Lord, and their vindication from you, declares the Lord. Isaiah 57, 54 verse 17. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Exodus 15, verse 3. The Lord will fight for you. And you have only to be silent. You know, sometimes you don't have to run up your mouth. Sometimes you need to just let go and let God. Sometimes you just need to give up. And let them call you weakling. Let them call you all the name under the Son of God. Because you know what? What God is saying to you is, stand still. Stand still. Be humble. Just wait and see what I will do for you. You know, I, I can remember. I, I, I can remember. I have a whole lot of stories. I can tell you stories all day. But I can remember, you know, growing up. And, and you know, my, in the church that I was. And, and I remember this old elder. The oldest elder in the church, Brother Cousins. And Brother Cousins sit there and... You know, I can remember one day while he was up there preaching and some uh, children across the bush, you know, every Sabbath you're in church, you'll be hearing stones on the, on the zinc. You know, at the time we, we had zinc, uh, the, the church was zinc and you could hear some big stones falling on the zinc and you want, sometimes you want to run out of church because you don't know if those stones are going to hit you. And I remember one Sabbath, Brother Cousin says, let us fast. The next time you come into church, we're going to fast and pray for those children. And I can remember, you know, I, I was young then, but, you know, memories are good. And I can remember the Sabbath morning, we were in church, and fasting was going on the whole day. No preaching. It was just praying. And I can tell you, the Holy Spirit was in that place. And all of a sudden, I don't know if these children were about to take stone and, 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 and start to stone the church again. But all of a sudden, I hear a big wailing. And everybody was wondering what was going on. 
some of the members went out of the church, and when they went out of the church, those same, some of the same little boys who were already about to start throwing stones at the church, eventually they pick up the stone. And while they were about to throw the stone, the stone ended up hitting about two of them, knocking them down on the ground, opened their heads, and blood was just flowing out. Thanks be to God, they were alive. But you see, when you pray, God delivers. Stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. The battle is not yours, but God. Leave it in his hands. He will do the rest for you. Have you ever tried to fight a battle that belongs to God? Imagine, it looks a little like how to fight between David and Goliath. Would you, David have chosen to go his own strength instead of God's tiny human pity against a much bigger man. How, how can you imagine a tiny little boy like David going to fight a big, massive man like Goliath. You know, I, I, can't, I still can't fathom it, you know. I, I still, I st up, till, up till right now, I still trying to fathom, you know, this war between the two people. A little boy and somebody up there. How can this be that? Tell me. You see, I am smiling. You know why I'm smiling? Because I know. And you're supposed to know too. Because you see, some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But you know what? When we believe in the name of the Lord our God, nothing, nothing or no one can challenge you. So when David took up that sling and the sword and that sling and the stone and, and when David wheeled it and, and, and it started to go around, you know, and, and it goes round and round and when they let go, the Holy Spirit was just in that stone. And when he hit Goliath, Goliath never knew it was coming. He fell on the ground. And I guess he was stunned and he said, I can't believe this. But you know what? When God is working with you, nothing can stop you. You are God's children. You are God's child. Just remember, even when your manager wants to step over you, your co-workers want to step over you, just remember... No weapon formed against you shall prosper. They will not prosper. They may be seem to be winning. They may seem to be having all the glory. But just remember, you are a child of the king. Hold on to that. Never let go. Just like David did. He went with the Holy Ghost. You can do the same today. You may be going through a situation that is beyond your control. You may even feel that you are in control. You are not in control. Whatever the situation you are going through today, just remember, the battle is not yours. I don't know your situation. And a whole lot of us sit inside here. You may not tell me. But I can tell you, I'm telling you, I know you're going through a whole lot. I'm going through a whole lot. I may not tell you, but I'm going through a whole lot. But I know I am going to stand still. And I'm going to hold my position because I know my God is going to work for me. And I know he will work for you. Just believe, trust him, and he will do the rest for you. I'm reminding you, the battle you're facing is not yours. It's God. If you are a child of his, you must be certain that Satan is going to attack you. And his rage against you is not going to be easy. If King Josephat and his people set their heart to seek out and to fast, you can do the same. And they cried out with prayers and with supplication. Then they asked God for help. They asked God to please help us. And he did. And just like Josephat went into a season of prayer with the nation and fasting, at times, brethren, you know, sometimes we have to give up food, you know. Sometimes we have to give up food. If you want, a, you know you're going through a spiritual warfare. Sometimes you need to, you know, I'm serious here. Sometimes you need to give up the dumpling and the fish. And you need to 
seek after the Lord. And the more you seek after him, the better your life will be. The more you seek after him, how humble you will be. The more you run after him, how wonderful life will be. And if all of us can just follow those simple things, be still and watch the salvation of the Lord. Moses saw it coming. Jehoshaphat saw it coming. Why can't we today? All we have to do is to surrender our all to the Lord and let him do the rest. God told his people, Isaiah gave this warning to all satanic forces who have your reproach and blaspheme and against whom have you exalted your voice against the Holy One of Israel. God told his people, Israel, and he tell us today, the battle is not against you. It is Satan's reign against me. The Lord who abides in you. God said to Satan, I know where you abide. And I know where you come and go and you rage against me. I ask you, where is your battle? Is it your marriage? Is it your business, your job, your finances, your health? Does your battle get more intense day after day? If you have a heart for Jesus and a desire to cleave to him, you will face the range of hell. But that is still not your battle. You can end your battle quickly if you choose to, simply by quitting and giving up. Satan will bother those who he wouldn't even try to bother you if you know you give up. Yes, the battle is the Lord's, but we have a part. And that is to trust and believe his promises. In the face of hopelessness and when it seems to be impossible, thus said the Lord, O Jacob and speakers of Israel, my way is hid from the Lord and my judgment is passed over from my God. Isaiah 40 verse 27. Faith demands that I turn all. You hear what I'm saying? Faith demands I turn all, not some. God don't want you to come half-hearted. He wants you to come full. Faith demands that you turn all your problems into a give it to God. Leave it with him. All your critical situations, all my fears, all my anxieties into the hands of the Lord. When I have done all I can do and I know my battle is beyond my power, I must submit all into his hands. Our Lord knows the ranging of Satan. And we must truly believe he will act. He will bring us through floods and fires and put to cease the spiritual enemies. Here is God's word concerning what he will do because of your rage against me. It has come into my ears, therefore. I will put a hook in your nose and a bridle in your lips, and I will turn your back by the way you come. Isaiah 37 and verse 29. If you will hold fast your faith, trust him, rest in his promise, rejecting all the lies of Satan's, come into your mind, then expect God to come by his spirit into your situation and bring an expected end to your practical battle. He will move heaven and earth to deliver you and make a way. You know, as the song says, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. You, you, what more can you ask for? What more can you ask for? The way out is to trust. Trust God and he will make a way for you. I can, I've read the story about Martin Luther. Not Martin Luther King Jr., the American. Martin Luther, the German. And he says, in the tempest days of the Black Plague that swept through Saxon Germany, became greatly discouraged by the mountain trials he created. He came to the breakfast table one morning with a heavy despair. He looked up and saw his wife dressed in black as if she was going to a funeral. Luther said to his wife, who died? His wife Katie 
turned and said to him, well, apparently God, the way you are acting, it seems as if there is no God. And Martin Luther turned around and he looked at it and he says, Waymaker, I'm going to pray for my people. And I know he did. You can do the same today. You are fighting a spiritual battle. The battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. I can remember hearing a story. At a, the pastor was conducting a crusade. And while he was in this area conducting the crusade, many came to Jesus. And this was an Adventist pastor I was told. I don't know who the story is, but I've heard a whole other pastor talk about it. And I was told that some of the era guys weren't too happy because one of them, baby mother at the time, uh, find God. And she got baptized, and he wasn't a happy thing. So he got his friends to go down to the tent. It was a crusade. So he got his friends to go down there to fight. And he tell everybody going to the crusade, you can't go down there tonight. There's going to be a fight. The pastor showed up. When the pastor showed up, the deacons showed up. And when they look ready to start crusade, they don't see anybody coming. They're wondering what was going on. Lo and behold, when the pastor was up on the rostrum and he looked, he saw a gang of guys coming. And the pastor knew what was going to happen. I was told that the pastor rolled up his sleeve. And when he rolled up his sleeve, you know what was coming. And I was told that every blow they blew at the pastor, the pastor's fist was up. And he was saying, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Today, I live with you. You are in a spiritual warfare. You are fighting Satan. You are not fighting your brothers and sisters. Satan is doing everything possible to rip us apart. This pandemic is causing us left, right, and center. We are feeling it to our core. And Satan is having a field day. He's having a field day. We have lost so many loved ones in this church because of it. But rest assured that when he comes again, and every time he comes, cry out for the blood of Jesus. Cry out to God. Rest assured that when you hold your fist up and you're ready to fight, you're not fighting alone. Hold your position. Stand still and watch God works in your favor. Today, don't let the devil rip you apart. Take hold. Take your stand. Let God be the center of your joy. Hold fast till he comes. Because God is waiting for a people who are willing to stand still. Because the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's.